weekend. Perhaps you'll be going out with your metal detector. Because of, uh, I'm thinking of doing it now. Because a woman from Lancashire has uncovered a 350-year-old ring on the banks of Loch Lomond. Michelle Val from Blackpool was up in Scotland with a metal detector when she came across a ring which dates back to 1640. Now, it's going up for auction in September and it's expected to raise quite a bit of money. Michelle told me how she discovered this antique. Well, I was detecting up in Scotland uh, near Loch Lomond and um, on a small field uh, with my husband and got a signal and um, when I uh, dug the plug, as we call it, um, underneath was this wonderful um, gold ring. So what happens when you're out with your metal detector, yes. anything that is metal, it, it, yes. it, it, it sets, off a, sets off a signal, does it? Yes, it does. Um, on the detector that I have, it has certain numbers that come up on it, sort of gives you an idea of what um, it, it might have found. Um, but sometimes we have like um, a sound that comes through as well, but um, also gives you a good idea what it could be. All oh, right, okay. So, yeah. so this, was, this was a good sound. Because it was an excellent sound, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because this ring dates back to 1598, doesn't it? It's around that time. You're saying maybe a little bit later, about 1640. They're thinking a little bit later than that, yeah. And let's be vulgar, let's talk money. Okay. How much <laughs> are you hoping it's going to bring? Well, uh, the experts advise me it's going to be around £10,000. Wow. Um, who who knows? Um, it could be one of those uh, that um, it, it, nobody knows really. But the same ten thousand pounds anyway. So how long have you been doing this for? How long have you been out with your metal detector? With, with my detector, I started uh, two and a half years ago. Um, I attended a club actually in the Ribble Valley. Right. It's, it's called the Hydeburn in Ribble Valley Club, and it's run by a gentleman called John Ferguson. And um, with with my uh, anxiety issues that I have, John was very understanding, and um, I've been there ever since. So by doing stuff like this, does it does it get you get you out of the house? It does get me out of the house. I go every weekend. Right. And this ring, this is not the first thing you found, is it? Of no. great value. No. Um, I was very lucky, and I, and I feel very privileged that I found um, a gold coin. Um, in 2017, which was one of three in the world, yeah, very lucky. So, one of three in the world, very yeah. lucky. Let's be vulgar yeah. again. Talk money. How much? What for the coin? Yeah, forty thousand eight hundred in the end. Yeah. Wow. Was, yes, I know. It was again. It was valued at between ten and fifteen at the time by Dick Noonan and Webb, uh, the auctioneers. And um, but in the end, obviously, um, with, with its historical significance with it being a Richard III half angel. Um, yeah, it went for 40,800. I, I was amazed. amazed. You're, all, you're obviously very good at this. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't think you can say anyone's any good at it, really, Graham. I think it's more of, um, I was just there at the right time and I, and I walked over it, I suppose. That's what we all say in, in the detecting world. We, we just walk over something and um, if we're lucky enough to swing the detector over that right spot at that, that right time, um, we tend to find it. Is yeah. it fair to say that people who are metal detectorists have a bit of an image problem? <laughs> You know what I'm getting at, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but seeing, seeing sort of 30 people on a, on a field thinking yeah. a, a metal detector, that kind of image yeah. to me. Yeah. Um, to be honest, um, I don't feel like that. I think the people, my friends uh, that I detect with, um, if, if anybody came along and actually had a go, um, they wouldn't say it again, put it that way. It, it, it's just an amazing hobby. The, um, to be honest, I, I've got lots of new friends through this hobby and um, I don't feel like... I know what you're going from. You're going from the maybe the detect. Is it? Yeah, um, the detectorist uh, detectorist comedy on, yeah. on, on the TV. Yeah. Some, sometimes we do speak like the detectorist on the TV. <laughs> to be honest with you, yes. <laughs> well, the yes, thing is, do. you've made lots of friends, but you've also made loads of money. Uh, well, that that was just a bonus. 
it was one of those that very unexpected, especially the ring. Um, I, ne I never thought I'd find anything else um, because a normal sort of day out on the field, 95% of your finds are just rubbish. Yeah. Uh, ring pulls and, and mis miscellaneous metal and, and anything else that the tractors left behind, you know, bits of tractor, those kind of things. Uh, I'm just very lucky. I've just been very lucky, yeah. Very lucky, really lucky. Michelle Valware from Blackpool. Let's talk to Nigel Mills, an antiquity specialist at Dick's Noonan Web Auctioneers. Nigel, good morning. Good morning, Graham. So what's the background of this, of this old ring? Well, we've done some research on it, and we've discovered that the crest on the ring, it's a seal ring, so it's used for making impressions in wax, for signing letters and so on. Uh, the crest is belonging to the Coleman family from Brent Ely in Suffolk. Now, that's, that's, um, it's a beautiful example of that. It has this rampant lion with sun rays at the side, with a um, sort of helmet above it, and then wings. Um, it's in beautiful condition, must have been lost almost uh, after it was made. Now, the date of the ring, from the style of the ring, is somewhere between 1640 and 1680. So, those are two first two things. Now, with things like this, the provenance can be very important. Mm. So, we have this amazing provenance where Michelle has found it on the banks of Loch Lomond. And you've got to ask yourself, what was a member of the Common family doing up in Scotland in at that time? Yeah. And what's interesting about Edward Coleman, this particular person was uh, in the court of Charles II, and he became the secretary to the Duchess of York, who was Mary of Modena, who was the wife of the future king, James II, James VII of Scotland, who became the Lord High Commissioner of Scotland. So they have very strong connections with Scotland. So that pinpoints it very much towards him. And Edward Coleman was eventually hung, drawn, and quartered in the oh. Hopish Plot in 1678. Oh, so it's quite an interesting story, um, as he was a, 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 probably a Jesuit, a, a Catholic, uh, very much a Catholic, devout Catholic, at the time when Protestants were in power. And he, in fact, they believe he may even have converted James II to uh, Catholicism. Okay. Let's so be it's vulgar. Very okay. Historical no, background it, it sounds it. Let's be vulgar and talk money. How yeah. much do you think he's going to go for? It really depends on how much interest we get uh, around the world. We, I mean, Catholics supporters might might be interested. I mean, he was even beatified by the Pope in 1929, so it has a lot of interest in that respect. It's a beautiful ring. It's a beautiful example. It's very rare in itself. Right. But uh, the Catholics have. I know Michelle is incredibly lucky. We called her the Lady with the Midas Touch. But these sort of items of jewellery are being found by metric petrists because they are easily lost. And what is amazing is that they are often in amazing condition when, when they are found. And there's very few that have survived before metric petrists came along. In the last sort of 30 years, we found lots of different items of personal okay. jewellery, which, which, which were lost to our, our, our knowledge, but now have, have come back as, as discoveries. Have you got any idea on a figure then? I reckon, I'm hoping for 40,000. Whoa. So it's similar to the ring. So it's similar to the um, Richard III half noble she found. I'm hoping it will fetch that kind of money, but we have to wait and see. And I'm sure Michelle's hoping for that kind of money as well. Whoa! <laughs> Forty grand. Should have made eighty thousand pounds. Leanne, get me a metal detector. <laughs> <laughs> Radio Lancashire. Travel. Back to normal now on the.